As you work with arrays, you'll often find that there are times when you want to do big operations on arrays. You want to take two arrays and put them together. You want to reverse the list of elements in an array. Maybe you want to sort the elements or you want to stick one array into another. Processing gives you tools for doing all of these things. In this video, I'll first very quickly go over them. Then I'll show you a demonstration of each one in action on three different arrays, and then we'll wrap up. Before we get started, I want to mention that it's really not important to internalize all the stuff in this video right now. I really just want you to be aware that these exist and to have the idea in the back of your head. Then as you sit down and write programs that use arrays, you're going to naturally find yourself saying, oh, I wish I could do this. And then a little bell will go off in the back of your head and you'll say, oh yeah, there's a routine for that. And you'll be able to come back to this video or check the documentation and look up how it's done. So let's take a quick look at these. As I said, there are nine of them. And very quickly, I'll just identify what they each do and then we'll look at them in detail. So let's just run through them in alphabetical order. Append lets you stick one extra element onto the end of an array. Array copy we've already seen, it's the means by which you create a new copy of an existing array. Concat is a weird name, but it's really just glue. It lets you take one array and stick it on the end of another. Expand is kind of a memory thing. It lets you add additional memory to the end of an array so that you can then fill it in with additional values. Reverse does just what you think. It simply flips the order of all the elements in an array. Shorten is sort of the opposite of append. It just removes the last element off the end of the array. Splice is a really interesting way of combining two arrays. It lets you take one array and put it into the middle of another array. It's like taking a bunch of pages from one book and sticking them into the middle of another book. Sort is another of those that does just what you think. If you have numerical data or strings, it will sort them numerically or alphabetically. And finally, subset lets you extract a bunch of elements from within an array and make a new array out of them. Let's look at these one by one. I'll demonstrate these functions for you using this little program where I'm going to take two input arrays, A and B, and use each one of these operations to create a new output array, C. I'm going to demonstrate it with three kinds of arrays. First, arrays of integers. And I'm going to draw them as dice just because I think it's more fun to look at. So A is an array of four integers, six, two, one, and four. B is an array of two integers, five and three. We'll also look at arrays of character strings. Now we haven't talked about character strings that much, but if you just think of them as a sequence of characters, you'll be fine. In this case, I'm just using little three letter animal names because they're easy to read and very short. So A contains four strings, fly, cat, eel, and ape, and B contains two strings, dog and bat. Finally, I'll also demonstrate each of these operations on arrays of colors. So A holds four colors, red, green, blue, yellow. B holds sort of a purple and a pink. Remember that each of these data types is a different array because you can't mix objects within an array. You can't have ints and floats and colors in the same array. So either A and B are arrays of integers or they're arrays of strings or they're arrays of colors. And when you write your own code, you can use any data type, booleans, characters, floats, integers. I'll just demonstrate it with these three. So let's go back to our original integers. And the first operation we'll look at is shorten. If we say C equals shorten A, we get the result shown at the bottom. All we've done is dropped off the last element of A. So A was 6214 and C becomes 621. The important thing to note here is that A is not changed. Shorten implicitly makes a copy of A, does what it does by dropping the last element, and then it returns that copy. If you want that to be saved in A, then just assign it to A and say A equals shorten A, and bam, A will become one element shorter. Or you can assign it to a new array variable the way I'm doing here, and now we have a new separate array that just has three elements. What happens if we shorten an array of strings? Well, we just lose the last string. So A was fly, cat, eel, and ape. 
and C is just fly, cat, and eel. And similarly, if we shorten a list of colors, then the red, green, blue, and yellow just becomes red, green, and blue. The next operation we'll look at is append. Append takes an array and a new element and sticks that element at the end of the array. So in this example, where A is an array of integers, I can append a new integer onto the end. In this case, it's three. The input array A is 6214, and the output array C is 6214 with a three on the end. Well, we can do append for any data type. Let's put a string at the end of A, and I'll append the string gar, which I happen to know is a needlefish because I do crossword puzzles. So by appending gar onto the end of A, now we have a new array with five elements, and gar is just tacked onto the end. Similarly, we can do the very same thing with colors. And in this case, I will take the array A, which is now an array of colors, and I'll stick cyan on the end. And we just get the output array C, which is the same thing as A, but with cyan on the end. The next operation we'll look at is array copy. I've discussed array copy in its own video, so I won't go into it in detail here, but notice that it is different than the others in two ways. First of all, you have to allocate C before you call array copy. And second, this isn't C equals array copy of A, like all the others. Instead, A and C go into the arguments of array copy. But array copy doesn't care what you're copying. It can copy integers, or it can copy strings, or it'll copy colors, or characters, or floats, or again, whatever. The array operations don't care what the contents are, they'll handle any data type. The next operation we'll look at is concat. Concat is short for concatenation, which is a mouthful. So it's a good thing it got shortened to concat. Concatenation means put two things together, just stick them together, and that's what concat does. If you say concat A comma B, it makes a copy of A, it makes a copy of B, and it just glues them together. And you can see the output C is just the array A followed by the array B. If we look at this in strings, we just stick dog and bat onto the end of A. And if we look at this in colors, we can see that the purple and pink just get stuck onto the end of the colors of A. The next operation is splice. And this is kind of an interesting one. In the overview, I mentioned that this is like taking some pages of a book and sticking them into another book. Splice takes three arguments. The first two are the arrays that you want to use, and the third argument tells processing where to put the second array. So here, the third argument is two. So this tells processing start with A and copy two elements. And so if we look at C, we say, yep, yeah, it took down the six, it took the two. After you've got two elements, now copy B. So, okay, it copies in the five and the three, and then it finishes up with A. And it goes back to A and picks up all the remaining elements, which are one and four. So B gets put into A, and the location where B begins is given by the third argument. If we do this with strings, we can stick dog and bat into the middle of A, giving us the first two elements of A, fly and cat, followed by dog and bat, <laughs> followed by the last two elements of A. And of course, we can do it with colors too. An array is an array, and processing just copies the elements. It doesn't even really care what they are. In part two, we'll continue our survey of array operations.